Hi and welcome to Android Studio tutorial. Today we'll be going over on creating uh, just a simple app like Hello World uh, where you can actually type something in and it pops up on the screen. Uh, so to get started we're going to uh, start a new Android Studio project. Uh, now for application name we'll name it Hello World. And uh, for company domain, it can be anything you want. Uh, for right now, it's set to JP Studios, but in here it doesn't matter what it is, just pick something. And then uh, just click next. And the minimum SDK will be API 15 for ice cream sandwich. We can uh, change that later if needed. And then just click next. And then here we'll uh, just go and uh, select empty activity. And the uh, activity name is main activity, that's okay. And then just click finish. All right, so once your application has loaded in, uh, let's go to the layout real fast. This is uh, the activity underscore main XML. This will be the first screen that pops up once you launch the application let's try to refresh this there we go so first thing what you need to do is run the application just to make sure it works if you don't have uh, a virtual device uh, you can click right here create new virtual device and then select uh, which version i just went with the nexus 5 uh, that works perfect. So, La launch your virtual uh, emulator and then uh, let's make sure the application launches first. Starting the emulator can take a while, but make sure you have you meet all the requirements because sometimes you can have some errors. If you do, just let me know in the comments below and I will try to get those resolved. But Looks like our application is actually working. We have hello world here, uh, which is okay for now. So let's get started. Uh, so what we're going to be working on is, let's see, we can uh, create like a button. Uh, when a user pushes it, it will take user input and then possibly change the text view. Maybe that's a cool thing to do. We can also show it as a toast message, which is like a like a background with the, some text that appears at the bottom of the screen, but I think updating the text view will be a better option. So let's get started with that. Um, so we just create a button. So let's create a button here. And then uh, for layout width, I would say wrap content and height, we'll say wrap content. And then let's set some text so when we know what the button is for. Uh, so let's say uh, text uh, oh, send hello. Or let's say <clears throat> update message. If your uh, if your lay layout looks weird like this, you're like the update the button is right in front of the text view. We're under relative view, so let's change it to linear layout instead. So that will fix it, but it's still, uh, they're next to each other. We don't want that. So what we'll do is uh, actually go ahead and uh, create a new layout, new linear. And then we'll say that will be the main, um, <clears throat> the main layout where all the bu uh, er, buttons and UI will go. That way we can control uh, the layout by the orientation. So if you want to type in orientation and set it to a vertical, that will uh, fix the alignment here. And then we can also say like uh, gravity uh, center. Okay, well, that uh, is not okay. Uh, let's put in a pipe and say top. So there we go. We put it in the top for us in, right in the center of the screen. And then, of course, we can uh, change the padding between the text view and the button, but I think we're okay for now. 
maybe for um, for textile we can say like bold and then uh, text uh, size let's say 20 dp okay that that looks good and then another thing we need for this uh, text view is give it an id that way we can update it later on so we'll just say android id and then at plus id and then let's say tv for text view uh hello message or let's just say message tv message so text view message that way when we come later on we'll know what it is for and then for the button let's give that uh an id as well and let's say bt uh, update now we can also change like the the style but we're not going to worry about the that for now we can cover that on uh, in another video uh, just let me know in the comments below if you need to know how to do that uh, basically we can change the the color of the button to match our theme of the application uh, but that's not really the focus of this video so so what we have now is a button and a text view um, we'll actually put another UI element here we'll say let's put a tech or edit text and then uh, for width will be match parent that way it's across the screen and then for height mm, we don't want it to match parent or wrap content we want it to be a single line so let's see I would say 75 dp maybe no that's too big 50 dp not too bad let's do 40 we'll see how it looks once we launch the application <clears throat> And then um, we can also say like max lines here. Oh, there we go. Uh, is equal to one. And then another thing is we can do hint. That way we know uh, we can tell the user what uh, what the field is for. So we can say message of the day. And then of course we'll also need. Uh, an ID for this one so we can update it programmably. So we'll say Android ID ID is equal to ET for edit text message. So we are actually set to get started. We can uh, go ahead and uh, run the application real fast, make sure the UI looks okay once we launch it. Yep, looks good. Uh, and I, when we type, uh, we can uh, press the enter button and it creates new lines, but we'll, uh, we'll let, that's okay for now. Uh, we're, we're not going to worry about that. So what we want to do is uh, basically once we hit this update message button, it should update the hello world uh, text view for us. So to do that, we're going to go to the main activity under Java this is uh, the first activity that starts and then over here on create <laughs> so this is once the activity has been created um, it will go ahead and set the content or the view content to activity main which is our xml file right here so that's how it knows that the screen goes with this activity but what we need to do right now is actually declare some uh, variables uh, for our items that we created. Uh, you can declare them up here before the onCreate. So that will be a class-wide variable or we can declare it here and it will only be available in this uh, method. But I like to just go ahead and uh, say up here, we'll declare them so they can be accessed throughout the, the class so we'll say public and then so we created three items which is text view edit text and a button so we'll say text view public text view for the text view we created and then let's give it a name uh, for the name i'm just going to use the same id so tv message that will be the name of the variable 
And then let's create the same thing for edit text. So public edit text, that's the object, and then the object name should be et message. And then we'll do the same thing for the button. So public button and the name of that button will be btn update. I think that's what we set it to. Yep. I like to uh, just keep my uh, variables matching the IDs. That way I know uh, which element I'm working on. So well, since we created the variables up here, now we need to uh, set what they are um, and point and let Java know what they are. So TV message is equal to text view because that's what we used. And then we'll say find view by ID r dot ID dot. And then here we have ET message, TV message. So that's the one we're working with. And then I'll just do the same thing for the other elements. So ET message is equal to uh, edit text. That's the object we set it to find view by ID r dot ID dot. ET message, edit text message, yep. Last uh, UI element we created is button update. So we'll set that to a button. So by opening parentheses, typing in edit text or text view or a button, that's how we tell it this is this, what the object is pretty much for, uh, for Java. So we'll say ID is button update. Great. So we declared our UI elements. Uh, now what we need to do is grab what's in the edit text and then the update message button. So let's see for button. Uh, every time a user clicks on it, it needs to have a listener. So we're going to set a listener on here. So we'll say button update dot set on click listener new on click listener. So that will create this uh, right here, the void on click. So when the user clicks it, it will get the view and uh, run uh, what's in here. So what I want to do is have another method. So we'll say public void. So we're not returning any values. Update message of the day. We're not going to be taking any variables. We're just going to leave it normally because what we did up here is we made this public edit text so we can actually grab it throughout the entire activity. And then over here, uh, so when the on click for the button, we'll say call our update message of the day method. So what will happen once the user clicks on here, it will update message of the day, which is the method down here will uh, will tell it what, what it needs to do. So what we want to do is get the value of what's in the edit text and then send it to the text view by just clicking this update message. So we'll say uh, first thing we want to make sure the edit text is not empty. So if let's see if edit text message dot get text dot twos or actually just to length is greater than zero. So what that means is if 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 what's in here in this edit text is is not it's not empty. So let's say there uh, it's not letting me do it but like right here this has a value length of zero. So that means it's empty. But if we enter like, let's say one, that length uh, increases by one. And then uh, let's say put a five, that means the length is two. So back to our code here, we'll say once if it's higher than zero, then we'll do something else. Um, don't do anything. We can actually output to the screen like, toast saying the message is uh, empty 
Um, but we'll uh, worry about that later. So if our length is greater than zero, what we will go do is we want to update our text view. So TV message, that's our text view. And then we're going to set text. So text will be whatever is in here. So if I put this like that, that will be the text it will be set to. But that's not what we want to do. We want to get what's what the user typed in the edit text field. So we can actually create a, uh, a variable, like a string variable, take the text, alter it somehow, and set it to the text view. But we're not doing that right now. Uh, we're just simply taking what the user inputs and out putting it back on the screen. So we're going to set the text view message to set text to um, the edit text, edit message dot. Now, if you put just edit at et message, it won't work. It will error out. You actually need to get the text and get it as a string. So, and that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run our application and see if it worked. So hello world message of the day. It's empty. We're going to click update message. It didn't do anything. And then we can type like hello. And then there we go. The text view updated to hello. And then one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, you can also do different uh, options from here. You can output it as a toast or a message like to the user or even an alert if you want. But that pretty much uh, covers episode one. Uh, if you want to learn uh, something, uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, that way I know what you're looking for. Or if you have any uh, questions, let me know. Uh, and also, if you have liked this video, please like and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Uh, we'll, we'll try to go over some other Android development. Uh, just... Uh, pretty much the basics nothing uh too fancy but yeah feel free to contact me anytime and have a good day